Hey everyone, today we're going to be doing an unboxing video, and I know what I've said in the past time and time again that I don't like these shorter unboxing videos, but you know what, my opinions are wishy-washy, and we're just going to go for it. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Thomas Wooden Railway 2022 Thomas, and in addition to that, Gordon also. I'm really excited to take a look at these two items and let's get right into it. Let's take a look at Thomas first and foremost. These have been on my shelf for a long, long while, and I'm excited to take a look at them. Here is Thomas, as I promised. And as you can see, he has those weird type of wheels. And if I just bring in a normal CGI Thomas from 2013 right here, you can see his wheels are obviously very different. And I know some people harp on these newer style wheels, However, if you notice, these wheels right here are not really that normal either. So I don't think harping on the wheels is really the best idea. And I think it's a little misguided to trash on this line just because of that strange wheel design. Not even that strange, just a new wheel design. On the back of the package here, you can see it has the original classic logo, which I really, really like. And on the top of it here... You can see it has that track where they were going to do the um, added detail to the track. They didn't end up doing that. I got this Thomas, I think, in May of 2022, so pretty close to when the line launched, and it's been sitting in my basement all this time, so I'm really happy to take a look at it. I'm happy to say that I don't think the face is in any way misformed or misprinted, as I know that's a pretty big issue with these items. And I'm happy that mine seems to be okay. I'm not really sure what plan of attack I have for getting into this item. Because I don't want to harm the Thomas. Because the only bad part also about these items is that they don't necessarily chip. But the wood that is used is very soft and not very good quality. So I'm scared that I'll make a dent in the model. Or just something horrible, random will happen and that will just ruin my model. As you can see here, there was already a nick in the packaging when it was shipped. That's a little bit annoying, but you know what? It's not like I'm going to really care about the packaging. It is very nice, and I will display it, but it's not a break. It's not a make or break for this item. So I am going to cut into this wire right here that's securing Thomas into the packaging. And woo, that shook the whole camera setup. But we did get into the item, and oh my gosh, this is really awesome to finally have him in my hands and to examine him further. So, as you can see here, his detailing is extremely well done. I'm very proud of Mattel, that even though the life of this line is up in the air, if it's ever going to go for a Wave 3, at least we know that Mattel is still capable of doing some pretty great stuff for the Thomas & Friends merchandise line. And looking at this guy off camera, he really is a really, really nice model. So let's look at the detail a little bit further. As you can see, his face right here, that is a pretty good Thomas face. And I don't think it's as good as, obviously, the CGI face. But I think for what it's trying to accomplish, sort of a mix between the CGI series and All Engines Go, it should suffice for what it's trying to accomplish. Right here, you can see he has the wheel arch right there. And he has a nice... Uh, running board detailing. It does include the rivets that were present on, I think, the Season 24 models for the CGI series when it was Big World Big Adventures. There is a pretty nasty um, seam line in the plastic here, which I'm not the biggest fan of. And this is not something that started with these models. In fact, it started with the Mattel models after 2013. This is actually not a 2013 Thomas. From the wheels right here, you can tell it's a later production model, and there's some pretty nasty plastic marks right there, and I really don't like that. As you can see, if I bring in a learning curve model right here, he has no such marks on his boiler, and I think that um, that's a pretty big letdown that these items are of good quality, but not the best quality that they could be and were in the past. I do not like how... Thomas is, his coal bunker is so high up, um, that's a little bit strange how it goes, his cab's right here and his coal bunker's so far up, that's a little bit strange to me. The wheel well detailing and these little bits, I'm not sure what you call them, those are all very, very nice. 
And I know that some people, as I said, don't like these wheels, but you know what? I think it, they're pretty okay in my book. I think this Thomas model is a little bit longer than the original one, and I think that is true if I do a size comparison right here. This one is a little bit longer, just chassis-wise, and the wheels look like they're spaced out a little bit more. The paintwork on this guy is nice, however, it does look like it was, I'm not sure, it, it was like stickered on? I'm, I'm not sure if I'm describing that right. It just doesn't look very crisp, or it doesn't have that shiny finish that so many items such as this Learning Curve Thomas had. And I know I keep going back to this Learning Curve Thomas, but this really is the gold standard for Thomas and Friends merchandise. And although this item is good, it does not match that Thomas Wooden Railway item from 2003. The magnets look good. I'm glad that they look a little bit more um, expensive than the wood magnets. The wood magnets were very cheap. And I know that's a weird complaint, but they just looked awful. The plastic that they used for the magnets. And the magnets themselves were very weak and just not good in general. It does have this widow's peak back here, which is really interesting that they brought that back. That kind of makes Thomas look a little bit weird, as obviously that's not a feature he has in any rendition of any accurate model of Thomas. But to each of their own, I guess Mattel wanted to bring it back. And as I said, having the printed coal is pretty cool. As you can see, the learning curve one didn't have painted coal. It was just that black box right there. And it's nicely detailed. I, I, I really like it. And overall, this is a really great model. The only suggestion other that I could have had is that they could have, instead of just painting the suggested crevice right here next to the wheel arch, they could have made it 3D and had that little indentation right there instead of just that painted on um, shadow effect. But that's a pretty minor nitpick for what really is a pretty great item. And if I bring in the CGI Thomas right here, let's see how he couples up. And I think actually... That's a pretty, um, that's pretty, they look kind of good together, actually. And he doesn't look too out of place from this Thomas to this Thomas. So overall, I think that is a pretty nice item. And I'm not really sure what I'm going to use these items for, and quite, um, if I'm being quite honest. I don't think I'm going to use them for a series or any remakes or anything like that. So most of all, I just want these items because I think they're an um, interesting part in the history of Thomas merchandise how we thought that Thomas Wooden Railway was just absolutely dead, never coming back. And lo and behold, in the midst of the pandemic, they there was the weeks of them, I think in the summer of 2021, and then eventually we got all these models, and unfortunately, it looks like we're done getting them, which, as I said, is pretty unfortunate, as these are just such great models, as it's shown with this Thomas. And an even better model, in my opinion is this Gordon right here. And not to outdo you, Thomas, but just in every facet, I think Gordon does outdo that Thomas. He looks so good. And another great part about this packaging is this sliding door that you can see these models. And of course, when this packaging was first revealed, um, I know myself and a lot of other people were concerned about how could you just not steal the items? But luckily, they are secured in okay enough that I think... It's a, they are pretty theft-proof in those circumstances. And the Gordon box is not that much different. These are the newer, or rather, should I say, older variations of the boxes, so they don't have that hook that later models have. I think in Wave 2, maybe, that's when they added them. But these are obviously maybe the first batch of um, engines that were finally made and put in box, so that's probably why it doesn't have that hook on the back. And it still has that detailing on the track, which obviously later boxes would omit as they didn't end up going in that direction. However, I'm so ecstatic to pull out this Gordon. And as I was looking at his face, I brought up, in, in, in my mind, I brought up an interesting point that I'll make with the faces. As I know some people are not the biggest fan of um, the different expressions on the faces and... Just a little spoiler, I'm really not either. So we'll have that discussion when we get to it. This Gordon, however, I don't really know how I'm going to get him out as the wire is stuck more under his bogeys, unlike Thomas where he just has that one bogey. So I might have to do this off camera. So excuse me while I do that. 
And finally, I got Gordon out of the packaging. And I'll just tell you, this guy looks spectacular. And really, the first thing I noticed is the sound that his bogeys make when they shake. It's interesting what sound they make. And also what's interesting is his different sized wheels. That is something we really have never seen on Thomas Wooden Railway models, at least to my knowledge or recollection. And I think it's a pretty nice addition that, although maybe some people thought it might look strange, myself included, I think it actually looks really nice and fits in with this range with more detail m maybe than the earlier models, which were more about simplicity. So, speaking of simplicity, the faces are their own type of, I guess, simple caricature of, as I said, a mix of both CGI and all engines go faces. And I think it works okay. However, my biggest gripe with the faces is that there are all these different weird expressions. I really wish we just got maybe a neutral face Gordon or a smiley face Gordon, such as his 2013 Mattel item has. And I know Mattel is capable of making great face molds. I mean, all the Mattel items I have have great faces. I don't think I can think of a single Mattel item that has a bad face mold. Um, but these, these faces are okay style-wise. However, the addition of these different character faces for the generic stock standard models of these items, I'm not the biggest fan of. So if we take a closer look at this Gordon, he has eight wheels, or no, that's not right. He has six, ten wheels, I guess, because six in the back, and then he has that front bogey, which has four. So he has ten wheels, excuse me. As you can see, it's the summer, so I'm not in math mode right now. And he's looking up with his face expression. That is, as I said, a little bit strange. He has those rectangular buffers, which I forgot to mention on Thomas. They added buffers, which is a really nice addition. And you can see that he has the 3D wheel wells, I guess you could say now. And he also has some of that um, side rod detailing right there with his piston. And overall, I think that he is very nicely shaped. And his proportions compared to Thomas are superior in a lot of ways. He has that big dome right here that fits with the Gordon model. Because if you see this Gordon right here, that's just a puny dome right there. That's not even... That's nothing like the proud and strong Gordon would have for his dome. There is the firebox glow in his cab. Thomas also has that too. I forgot to mention it. And... Overall, his cab is pretty well-sized compared to the rest of his body. It's not too big, not too small, in my opinion. And there's no back detailing on here. Of course, there is the front buffers, but there is no back buffers. And I don't really have that much more to say, except I did forget to mention that on the bottom of these engines, they do have that little Thomas cloud that I guess signifies as the Thomas brand, and his name is printed on the bottom right there which is just a completely random decision that they decided to go from having the names painted horizontally on this chassis to now having them um, printed vertically on the chassis. And also something I just wanted to notice is if Thomas had that same printing, and yes, he does. He also has it printed vertically. And his chassis, of course, is wood. Gordon's is plastic. So there's no variation in terms of printing between the plastic and wood. So that's just something I wanted to check for. And I almost forgot about Gordon's tender here. I almost made him out to be a tank engine there. And it does say Gordon's tender. At least it doesn't say something like Gordon's coal car. That's a nice. And the biggest addition, as you can see to this tender, is that it has six wheels. And I think that just looks so amazing. Having this tender be so substantial is just a huge step up in quality from the previous tenders that were just these small four-wheel little rinky-dink tenders that you could just throw around and don't weigh that much. This feels substantial. And of course, he has some rivet detailing, the painted coal, or not, excuse me, not painted coal. The molded coal is back and in its full glory, and I'm just so happy that it is. And this magnet is a little bit weird. I know I commented on how good the Thomas magnet was. This one is a little bit clouded. I'm not really sure why. This side's fine, but that one, I don't know. There's just something a little off with it. And overall, I don't think I see any 
quality defects in these items, which as you, if you know anything about the history of my channel, that's a, a miracle for me because my previous unboxing video, I think every single item had a laundry list of things that were imperfect about them. But these are brand new items, so I guess that's what you get for um, buying stuff on Amazon. And let me just tell you, it is so great to buy these items from a store. I mean, you can get them at Barnes & Noble. It's not like they're at Walmart or Target or Toys R Us, Rip Toys R Us, but you can get them at Barnes & Noble. You can get them on Amazon and probably other online retail spaces. And that's just so nice to finally have new Thomas merchandise that you can go out and actively buy instead of paying exorbitant prices on eBay for just overpriced nonsense. And it's just so great to have a new Thomas line to get excited and hyped over. And these, I have every right, I think in my opinion, to get excited over these. Even though this unboxing is maybe a year late compared to when everyone else was taking a look at these items, I think it was finally good for myself to show my reaction to these items. And honestly, I am extremely pleased with how they turned out. And I hope you are too, in that maybe if you haven't purchased these items yet, this will be a recommendation from yours truly to give these items a try. Because as I look at them more and more uh, through the camera lens, there is just so many great things um, that I could say about these items. And... I could make a whole video probably about just the quality and uh, secret W's that these items have. And maybe the pros and cons between this and, let's say, uh, 1996 Thomas, which is extremely different. And the only thing I can think that they have in common is that they have the Widow's Peak, which is a little bit interesting. But nonetheless, I think that wraps up this unboxing video. Expect more of these in the future. I know I said that there'll be more short unboxing videos. And believe me, behind me, I got boxes and boxes of new Thomas Wooden Railway 2022 characters that I have gotten in the past and have just recently gotten. So I think that would be a make a great video series for the summer, maybe accumulate some views and some attention to the channel. And also, I have another remake coming up. So I know I said I wouldn't do remakes anymore, but I was lured back by the appeal of how easy making remakes is, and that's coming down the pipeline. So without further ado, I think I'll end this video, and I'll thank you for watching. Make sure to put in the comments below, what are your thoughts on these items? Do you think they're better than the old Thomas Wooden Railway counterparts? Do you think that this line is going to continue? I know we haven't had an update from Mattel in a year and a half on these items, and what items would you like to see if this line did continue? express coaches, road vehicles, um, other characters like Salty, or Salty is the only one I can think of, maybe Duck or Donald and Douglas, Daisy, any of those characters. So let me know in the comments below, and once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.